Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be learning about how to do one of the easiest things in all of coding, and that is just making a simple countdown timer. This is the same countdown timer that you have on your phone right now. I think it's gonna be really easy and just hopefully a fun tutorial overall. So with that being said, let's just get right into the video. All right guys, welcome to the tutorial. Let's just hop right into it. We're gonna create a new project here and go ahead and use a Windows Forms app with the .NET framework. Go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna name mine countdown timer. Go ahead and create that. All right, here we are, we have our project. Let's just hop right into the fun stuff right away. So click on your form and let's change a few properties right off the bat. So the first thing we wanna do is change form border style to fixed single. That's going to allow it to stay the exact size that you see it on the screen here and the user cannot resize it. Um, we're gonna rename it from form one to count down timer and we're going to do some other things as well. So change the text here to countdown timer or whatever you'd like to name it. And let's change the color scheme that we have here. So instead of this boring white, we're gonna go ahead and drop that down, click a custom color here and choose whatever color you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead with like this lighter purple cause I think that looks cool. And we have our basic interface set up um, however, there's nothing on it, so let's go ahead and add some goodies. Uh, first thing I like to do is always drag a label up to the top of the screen here. Let's go ahead and customize the font on it. Let's just choose something cool. I don't really care. Let's do that and now let's do bold, maybe size 24. So now we have a label and go ahead and change the actual text of it to, let's say, count down timer. So this is just a basic like welcome banner kind of thing or a countdown timer, just the title of your app, or you could put whatever you want up there. Obviously just do whatever your heart desires. So up here, we're going to do, instead of the name of label one, we're just going to say top label just so we can remember that later. And some other things we want to find the auto size property, change it from true to false. And that's going to allow us to size it as big as we want. So what I like to do is just go ahead and push it up near the top of the screen. And there's one more thing that we have to do, which is go ahead and fix the text align property. So instead of top left, we want to be middle and middle. So now we have a basic label and it looks pretty cool, but we're going to need something else. So go ahead and copy and paste this. And then this next label is going to be in the middle of the screen, but just a little bit higher. And instead of saying countdown timer, we're going to say, 60 seconds because that's the default time that we want to start with um you could change that if you want if you want to start with 90 seconds or whatever it is go ahead and start with that but i'm going to start with 60 because it's a nice even minute to start with and instead of calling it label one we're going to call this timer label and remember that name timer label or whatever you name it you're going to need to use that later in the back end so we need a few more things here before our interface is complete. Go ahead and drag a button and kind of just make it roughly this size and drag it a little bit off to the left. And we're gonna change the name of this to the reset button. And let's put that kind of in this area, like I was saying, and let's change up the color scheme of it and make it look better than it does right now. So we're gonna have a, uh, Good old white background is the, actually this is the text color, my bad. The white background or the back color is gonna be like this. And the four color, we could stay as black for now. And let's go ahead and change this text down here to say reset and then change the font. So I like to have things match. So I'm just gonna have this be the same font as up here, which I already forgot, but it looks like it's this. So go down here find the same font and go ahead and just select a nice size like 14. So that's big enough that the user could easily see it. And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And we want to just center this as best as we can where they're still evenly spaced. And I think that looks like a nice even spacing there. I might be a little bit off, but for the most part, we know that that's pretty good. And then one last time, copy and paste and then drag this other button to be a little bit wider than the other two. 
And what we're going to do here is change the actual text here. So instead of reset for the second uh, button here, we're going to say stop. And then this one down here, we're going to say start. And then go back to here and change the actual name of the button to stop button. And then here, we're going to say this is the start button. All right, so we have a basic interface here. Um, if we were to launch the app right now, obviously nothing would happen, but it would look like this, which is cool. I think it looks pretty nice, but let's actually add some functionality to it. All right, guys, hopefully you're following along to this point and it's at least a little bit entertaining. Um, go ahead and double click on the form. That's gonna add this nice load method. We can go ahead back to the form, remove the load method by just clearing out this box here, and then go back to your form and it will now be gone. Go ahead and click enter and now we're going to start designing our backend code to make the front work and this is my favorite part of doing any app is just seeing things start to work which is sick and hopefully you guys uh, are excited for that too so the first thing that we need to think about is we need a timer we need a something to keep track of time and lucky for us there is a default timer object that we could just simply drag onto the screen. Okay, now before you click on anything else, go ahead and click on the timer. You wanna add this timer tick method to it. And then another thing that we need is go back to the timer and click on the properties area. And instead of timer one, we're just gonna call it timer. And the interval, change that from 100 to 1000. So that's gonna change it to a uh, seconds interval. And that's all we need to do for now. So just remember the name is timer and change the interval. Okay, so the very first thing that we need here is to program our initial variable of how much time we wanna have to start. So we could change this as we go, but what, I, what I'm gonna do here is since I said 60 seconds on the front end, that's how much time I want to start with. So I'm gonna call it int time left and we're just gonna set it equal to 60. So that is gonna hold 60. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is actually kind of program how the timer is going to work. So in our timer one tick method, and you'll notice it's called timer one, even though our thing's called timer. Luckily, it still has one reference, meaning it's still tied to the object, and we don't actually have to update the name. If you want to go through the hassle of doing that, you can. I'm not going to. Um, but for now, let's think of this. So for every second that ticks all the way down to zero, we want to update the time or sorry, we wanna update the label to tell the user how much time's left. So, you know, it's 60 seconds and 59 and 58 and so on. So the first thing we wanna do is just add an if statement. Oops, it added that padding word for some reason. So if time left, which is how much time we have, is greater than zero, what do we wanna do? So for all the seconds above zero, we wanna keep updating the timer label on every single tick. And one thing to note is this timer one tick method, it's ticking like a real clock. You know, every second it just fires because the app's running. And that's super cool that that's already built in. We don't have to do any logic or anything like that. Visual Studio takes care of that for us. So for every second that it ticks, we want to go ahead and subtract one second from our time left. That way it's in sync. So we're gonna say time left is equal to time left minus one. So for everything, every time it ticks, you know, 60 to 59, it just, it's going to keep keeping track of that. And then the other thing we want to do is we're going to say timer label, which is our label to display time. If you remember, um, that text is going to be time left plus, and then uh, double quotes for to add a string, space, and then seconds. So for every second above zero, we want to keep track of how much time's left and then update the the label with the current amount of seconds on the clock. Now, another case we need to address is the else. So once the timer hits zero, what do we wanna do? First, I would recommend stopping the timer. So you could do that by calling out the name of your timer and then stop, the stop method is called and that will instantly stop the timer completely. So that will stop the timer. One more thing we need to do is let the user know that their time has ended. So an easy way to do that is just say timer label dot text is equal to time is up. So our timer tick method is completely configured. If we were gonna launch the app, let's go ahead and see what happens. So as we click around the interface, you'll notice that nothing's happening. The 
seconds isn't updating like we thought it would. And there's a reason why. Each one of these methods, or sorry, each one of these buttons needs to have a method. We need to be able to start the timer. The timer is there, but we haven't started it. So this start button needs to fire the timer. The reset button needs to be able to reset everything to how we see it now. And then the stop button just needs to simply be able to pause it and then start it again. Well, not the same button, but you get you get it. Stop is just pause. What we're going to do is go back to our form one and let's just add a method for every single button. So double click on start, double click on reset, and double click on stop. So now that we have a button for every single type of event, we want to first start with the start button. And this is super simple. We're literally just going to say timer dot start. So when we click the start button, the timer is going to start. That will start firing off this timer one tick method. And then all that stuff will be happening. So in our reset button, what do we want to do? Well, first, when they click reset, we want to stop the timer and then reset it to what it was. So let's do timer and stop. So that will stop the timer. And then we want to reset the amount of time left. So oops, let's say time left is equal to 60 again. And then the final thing that we want to do is we want to reset the label. So time label or timer label dot text is equal to time left plus seconds. And then finally we have the stop button. And what we want to do in here is simply just stop the timer. So now that we have all three methods laid out, let's see how our app runs now. So we have 60 seconds up here. And let's go ahead and click start. So you'll notice as we started it, the timer is successfully counting down in one second intervals and subtracting. And it looks like a regular timer. So that's that's sick, right? We have it working. So let's test out the stop button. OK, we press stop. It stopped as we expected it to. Now, what happens if we press start again? Will it start? Of course it will. All start is doing is starting the timer up again. It doesn't reset anything. However, we have a running timer right now. We didn't pause it. Reset should handle everything that we want it to. So we click reset. It reset the amount of seconds left. And let's go ahead and click start and everything should be back to normal. And as you see there, it works flawlessly, which is awesome. Now we're basically done with the tutorial, but let me show you one more cool thing that you could add to this. Let's just have a little bit more fun with it and add some more features that our users could enjoy. Um, and it's really simple. So let's just drag, or instead of dragging another button out to the screen, why don't we just go ahead and copy and paste this button that we already have. Let me get a little bit smaller. Actually, you know what? Leave it the same size. Copy and paste it again. So now that we have kind of like a nice grid layout here, instead of saying reset for this button, we're going to say plus. And then we're going to bump up the font from 14 to like 22. And here we're going to do 14 to 22. Instead of saying reset, we're going to do minus. So you're probably wondering what this is and why we're doing this. Now I'm going to show you. So we're going to say minus button is the name here. And actually, let's keep it consistent and capitalize this first letter here. And then here we're going to say plus button. So now that we have our two new buttons, we have a plus and minus, why don't we just set them up to add five seconds or subtract five seconds and that's super easy to add so we're just going to double click on this one and double click on the other one so that adds two new methods in our back end and we just want to simply add the or five seconds for every plus to it so we're going to say time left equals time left plus five for the plus button and then let's just copy and paste this. And instead of plus, we're going to change it to minus. So all that's going to do is even if the timer is running, it's going to add or subtract five seconds. Or when they you know, have it initialized, let's just add five seconds right off the bat. So, so here we are. We have our app running. And we'll click the plus. But we notice that the label doesn't update. Now if we click start, there is more seconds than what we started with, but the label isn't updating. So let's just go ahead and add that as well. So to address this problem, we're going to go ahead and say the timer label 
left.txt is equal to time left. Now you could leave it here, but the problem is Visual Studio is going to complain. Time left is an integer and the dot text property on timer label is a string. So what we need to do is actually do dot and then two string, open close brackets. That way it'll convert the integer to a string. And all we need to do is just copy this and paste it down here. So now that every time we click the button, not only is it adding seconds to the amount of seconds left, but it's also going to be updating the label as we're doing it. So go ahead and click play. And here we are in our app. Let's go ahead and click the plus button. And now we have more seconds than ever. And we could subtract them as well. But there's one thing that we forgot to do. And after this, click the plus and then do the open, uh, close double quotes. And then just do seconds one more time. And we could go ahead and copy and paste this as well. So now let's go ahead and click start. And finally, we should have a polished and very responsive app. So we can just add as many here as we want. And we can subtract as many as we want. Now, one little nitpicky thing that I see here is seconds was capitalized and all the other ones. So let me do it one more time. And here we are. Our app is ready to go and ready to enjoy by anyone who uses it. Now feel free to add more features. The tutorial is going to wrap up there. Please comment down below any thoughts or suggestions or things that you were confused about or you want me to add to the app. I'd be happy to respond to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that said, once again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. <music>